Sup nerds, I'm Tom. We're gonna talk about That's a Question. Not a great name, but it is a great game. Great might be a bit of a stretch, but it is fun. So this is a party style, how well do you know your friends type of game, where you're basically playing a, a semi-advanced version of Would You Rather, minus the dirty aspects that Would You Rather tends to, to have. So like, let's say this. Uh, which of these would you choose? Uh, to never need to use the toilet or to paint the most impressive painting in the world? Well, how no how well do I know Aaron? Well, I think he's going to pick A, to never need to use the toilet. And we flip up, oh, he did pick A, so I was right. Or no, he didn't pick A, so I was wrong. Um, and also it's the person who poses the question, whoever gets it wrong, he actually gets a point for that person. So if so, like, let's say if I'm posing the question to Aaron, I'll get extra points if the other players get it wrong because I made a challenging question, if that makes sense. Everybody also has these two, what they're called, kickers. They're these smaller tokens that they can put underneath their guests, underneath their A or B. Um, one is a, a three times multiplier saying, I'm so confident in my answer that I want to get three points for this correct answer instead of one. And this question mark one, it's, it's posing that it's a difficult question. And you think you're going to get much like the question asker, you are going to get a point for everybody who is wrong. There are also these acorn tokens that you, you pass to the person you're asking or who just got asked or something. It's, it's a way of making sure that the same person doesn't get asked over and over and over again. But actually, I kind of came up with a bit of a system that I liked a little bit better than the way that they were showing in the book. It's not perfect um, because it doesn't line up perfectly with the number of cards that remain at the end. I like the way that the, the rounds end, it will end unevenly. But I was liking doing it where uh, once after you get asked, you flip your, your uh, acorn over to the other side. There's this regular acorn and this, like, what is that, Canadian acorn or something? Um, so that way, you know, you'll know who has been asked so far this round. And once everybody, everybody's like this, we all flip back over and, you know, we can do that process again. That's not in the rule, but that's the way I was playing. Cause I don't know, I just really liked it, but really that's the whole game and it's really simple. It's really fun. Now, I guess the only thing I didn't say is that these cards have three different options. It's not always which of these would you choose? It's whom do you consider worse? Someone who does these bad things, uh, which would you, what was it, which would you miss more if it ceased to exist? So it's, you know, there's a decent amount of options and with all these different cards, you know, that's one thing I can say about uh, CGE is with a lot of their party games like this and Pictomania and Trap Words and uh, Codenames, there's never a shortage of cards to add variety. If there's gonna be a deck of cards that'll give you questions and give you clues and give you words to say, they're gonna give you a lot of them. Now, while this is certainly a, how well do you know your friends? It's surprisingly fun to play with strangers. No, not suggesting you just go to the subway and start playing. But when you've got new people at the table, it's kind of a way to like get to know them because, and I don't know if this is 100%, you know, something that the rules allow you to do, but whatever, I never read the rules anyways. We kind of prod a little bit. Like, you know, if we if a question is posed to a new player who doesn't really know us, um, we'll kind of ask them questions to be like, well, hey, well, how well do you value this? And do you have any stories about that? Never need to use the toilet. Do you use the toilet a whole lot? <laughs> and we kind of do the same thing. If we know that this player's new when everybody else is getting asked questions, you know, we'll kind of speak outwardly about that player. we will be like, oh, no, no, no. This guy loves Chinese food. He eats that stuff all the time. No, he doesn't. Yes, he does. Hey, remember that time? You know, it kind of, you know, they are at a disadvantage for not knowing the people. Let's just call that out. But it's easy to kind of bridge that gap or mend that wound or whatever by everybody else just being really vocal. So then they feel by the end of the game, even if they didn't do so well, they feel like they know everybody. They think that's that's what games are supposed to do. You're supposed to bring people together and get people to know each other. I also really like the kickers because it adds this... I've said this in, about a lot of different types of party games where scoring sometimes is just something that they add in there because they kind of have to, you know, but really it's just an activity. It's a party game, you know, just drink some beers, have some fun, who cares? But the kickers make you care about the score. They give you this small amount of feeling of, ooh, I'm being slightly more strategic because I'm using my kicker now and I'm more confident that someone's gonna get it wrong or that I'm super right. And there are areas uh, as you pass, um, 
you know, as your squirrel moves up, that's how you count points with these little squirrels, which are great, by the way, these lovely little squirrel meeples. I think they're phenomenal, but there are areas where when you pass them, you'll get a kicker back. So you're also kind of incentivized to use them relatively frequently instead of just holding them off to the end of the game. So this one is pretty simple. I like it. I think some of CGE's, I think Pictomania trap words and code names are probably all better than this. Um, now granted, I'm starting to get a little sick of code names. I've played it a bunch. It's starting to get a little old for me. Uh, so I would probably currently right now more readily play this just because it's a bit newer and, and fresher. But I think the overall game of code names is, is probably still better. I think Trap Words is the best one though. But this is a really fun game, really great production quality. Love the colors, love the, uh, love the squirrel meeples, love the weird shaped cards. I mean, I have a lot of fun with this. Certainly want to play it again. Uh, you know, I probably just would play Trap Words. You know what? This is perfect for an odd number of players because in trap words and code names, you definitely need an even number of players. And Pictomania, people, if people can't draw and you've got an odd number of players, boom, that's the question. It's perfect. It's a great icebreaker, a great way for people to know each other. And hey, if any of what I was talking about in this video sounds interesting to you, I'm going to put a purchase link to this game in the description box down below. Go ahead and get yourself a copy. And hey, while you're down there, don't forget to subscribe to our channel so you will never be bored.